They really pop off. I hope one did not just fall in my coffee. Mm. We're good. No coffee gear. <laughs> I'm sure many of you by now have seen those 3D print kits, whether it's in the form of a card where you snip out all the pieces or you print each piece separately and put it together. For my own challenge, I decided to design a class activity that teaches 3D printing and the concept of gears to ages five and six, AKA the local girl guides or sparks in my community. In this video, I thought it would be fun to show you how I designed the assembly and how I used Onshape's built-in drawing feature to create my build instructions. In Onshape, I created my assembly. I built them all together in one part studio to walk through the different parts of my little gear machine. I have three gears, where the largest spur gear, which I made with a built-in spur gear generator. On Onshape, you can type into search tools and type spur gear and you'll find the tool for that. The small spur gear also has a keyhole notch that is for the camshaft. All three of the gears sit on this base. When I I previously posted a short about this design. I got a suggestion in the comments for a trophy to make the tree part more substantial, thicker if you will, so that it's a bit stronger. But the reason why I've kept it at this size and with a flat back instead of a rounded one is so it prints flat with no supports and minimum time. If I hide the gears and the caps, you can see the base has two very small shafts for the medium and large gear to sit on. And then for the smallest gear, it's actually a handle that clips on to the crankshaft. This crankshaft goes right through the tree base, as we can see. And then the notch on this crankshaft fits nicely into the notch on the spur gear. That way, when we crank the handle, the whole spur gear spins. Now, to make sure my gears don't fall off, as you can see, I've added small holes into the base tree frame, and you can pop some caps into those holes to make the whole assembly a little bit prettier and to hold the gears on. I did go ahead and add a university logo on this larger one, but you can go ahead and edit these files to have any logo or text on them, which is fun. There is a slot right here that I've included for a label, whether that be a logo, a name, or a trophy title. So you can either use the label maker or for the activity with the girl guides. I just have a piece of printer paper where they'll write their name with marker and we'll double-sided tape it. Looking for support with custom manufacturing? Well, look no further than PCB Way, today's video sponsor. Let's say I'd like a metal version of the gear machine. I don't have direct access to a metal 3D printer nor a CNC machine. So through PCBWay, we can quote the two processes and see how it compares. Let's use the large gear on my assembly as the test piece. This gear has a diameter of about 55 millimeters and a thickness of about four millimeters. When it comes to quoting for 3D printing on PCBWay, we can upload an STL or a step file. I can view it directly on their site to make sure I've selected the correct body with approximate dimensions. In this case, I'd like to make it out of aluminum and I'd like one part. To order a part like this out of aluminum, 3D printed by SLM, it would cost me around $30. Now let's compare it to CNC machining. If I'm looking to get the same part made in aluminum, it would cost me $37.61 using CNC. Let's re-upload this as a step file because it looks like STL is not supported. Re-uploading the step and again selecting quantity 1 in aluminum 6061, it looks like for CNC it'll cost me $37.61. So in comparison, it appears to be cheaper to print this large gear rather than to machine it. But keep in mind that 3D printed metal ends up being a lot more porous with a larger chance of internal stresses in comparison to something that's machined out of a piece of stock metal.
For the purpose of the girl guide activity, I created this handbook slash worksheet where it includes a list of parts for the build, like this, and then step by step, almost similar to like Lego instructions of how to put the little machine together. And I created each of these images using drawings in Onshape. This project was actually my first time I've made an assembly in Onshape and I've made 2D drawings using Onshape, so let's check it out. Basically, there's a plus button, which you can't see, I'm kind of in the way. There's a plus button down here in Onshape where you can insert a new tab, whether that's a new part studio, like what you see currently where I've made my model, or a new assembly or drawing. Let me move myself back. When I hit create a new assembly, I'm brought to a window like this with new tools. I can go ahead and insert parts from my parts studio, so that would include all the parts for this machine. So for each step in the manual, I've ended up creating a new assembly. That way I can create exploded versions of each of these steps to show how the parts go together. So down here I've got step one. Step one is attaching the large spur gear and large cap to the tree base. If I want to look at, edit, or create different exploded views, there's an option here on the left called exploded views, and then currently I have one exploded view called step one. If I double click, I can edit it, and then I see how I've dragged my parts apart to show how they go and fit together. And then I created a drawing with different sheets where each sheet I've just put in the isometric view of my exploded view for each assembly I've created for the different steps. So if I open my different sheets, we have step one, step two, step three, four, five, and six, which is adding the base. And of course, in Onshape, if you were actually making a technical engineering drawing, you can go ahead and edit this table title block. But in my case, I only wanted this exploded view so that I can go in and edit it with arrows for assembly. I zoomed in and took screenshots of each of these steps and brought it into Canva where I added some thick black arrows to indicate how the parts go together. Super easy. Also in here, I made another drawing. I basically use this drawing to give me screenshots of what each of the parts look like. And so in my manual, I made a parts list in page one showing the different items. And I made sure because I have three different gears that are three different sizes, because they're printed in the same color, I wanted to make it pretty obvious the different shapes so that the girl guides, which I believe for ages five to six have an easy time finding their parts and learning what they're called. When I was creating the orientation for medium and small caps in this assembly, the isometric view only gave a front look at the part and you couldn't see the actual joining peg. So I used named views to orient the part in a way I wanted to view it. I go into part studio and I select, let's see, the cap, small cap. And zoom in like this angle. I'm going to create a named view. So I'll save this as small cap view. By saving it, it will save this viewing angle so that I can reuse it. If I've moved my part around, I can select that same view and it brings my part back to it. So this is really useful in my drawing where there's certain geometry I want to view but it's not visible. So I can go ahead and reload my page. I'm going to create another sheet for the purpose of showing this and then I'll go in and insert the specific part, my small cap. And then when it comes to view orientation, when I drop down I can select my newly added named view. Let's add the named view here. That's my custom named view and then I'll put the isometric view right next to it so you can tell why adding a name view would be desired. Sometimes certain default drawing views do not fully capture the geometry of a part. Like you can kind of see the little back piece but with my larger caps the front circular part covers that peg. I'm currently in the process of printing out all the parts for the activity tonight. In total, I'm making 20 kits for the evening. I think there will be about 13 girls. I've made extra for spare parts or in case they have siblings that they wanna take one home to. So each kit for the activity 
is in a brown paper bag. I've also used Canva and a normal isometric view of the full assembly to create the little label. Inside will be the instruction workbook that I showed, as well as a name tag with a perfectly sized rectangle for the base of the assembly so the kids can just write their name on the paper and then we'll glue it right on their gear machine for them. I'm super excited to have used this fun PLA for some of the parts. I'm not sure how well my web camera will capture it, but it's a multicolor PLA with purple, black, and blue. And I printed it this way, so it did definitely create a very stripy pattern. Another thing to keep in mind when you are 3D printing a kit is that tolerances or how well your parts fit together might vary depending on the type of material and the brand of that same material that you print with. So if you create your assembly to be printed in PLA and then choose to print a bunch of different colors of the parts, sometimes different brands of the same type of filament might actually pull differently and as a result those parts might contract slightly differently when they're cooling and we know that this happens where parts contract once they cool because print warping is a thing. Now this might be a very very small difference between different brands of filament but I have noticed that when building my assembly for the girl guide activity because in my initial print prototype including black PLA for the small spur gear with the notch and black PLA for the little camshaft. But then in my assembly, I wanted to go all out with mint green and a nice multicolor silk PLA. And I noticed all of a sudden, even though I used the exact same CAD model, I was having issues with fitment. And my best guess was that the type of mint PLA brand actually contracts differently. My fix was to just remodel this inner diameter slightly larger so that it fit properly on this multicolor color shaft. This little feature here that looks like a mushroom or a button peg is what we use in this assembly to keep the gears on the tree base or the frame so they don't fall off while spinning. It's a simple two cylinder extrusion and a fillet. Now many of you, as you've probably guessed, will print it in this orientation and because the layer lines are parallel with this face or the build plate, we are going to have major weakness right here between these two joining cylinders. Rule of thumb is to add some kind a fillet or chamfer here to help increase the area so it's not just large cylinder, flat cylinder with only that circular area in contact when printing. So what I think I will do is increase the length of this shaft such that I can create an even larger chamfer, hopefully giving me more structure here. And if you want better strength, you can also branch out and create some ribs or fillets, kind of like a spider, but I don't really have that kind of room. And once it's been put into the tree base frame it won't need to be removed so I should be okay. First thing I will do is actually hide all of my sketches so if I click on a sketch hide all sketches then to pick the correct sketch for my model I'll just click it and choose the one above. So currently this is the size of the peg I have 3.15. I did end up resizing the holes I'm comfortable with keeping this size. What I would like to do is actually edit the length of this currently it's three millimeters I'm gonna make it three and a half such that I can get rid of this fillet and add a half a millimeter chamfer instead there we go and then I will also add a slight chamfer to the edge of this peg at a different size that way it's easier for me to push it into the hole on the frame and so adding a larger chamfer between the base and the peg part will give me better strength in my print if I print in this orientation and then adding a smaller chamfer at the edge where the peg is supposed to be driven into the base will make it easier to align and push the two together. Nice. Do you want to show me it spinning? Don't drop your trophies. Don't drop your trophies. Dora's taking photos. Nice. Good job, Lucy. Thank you.
I just got back from the Sparks activity and I want to give a summary of how it went. So inside of the kit, we have the instruction set. The front is a parts list, which came really useful because the girls were able to put this on the table and then take out each 3D printed piece and lay it on the table right on top of the sheet of paper, so that was helpful. And then on the back side were the instructions. I'm really happy that I used the on shape drawing to make this page because the girls, they're like ages five, six, seven, I believe. They use this whole sheet as a coloring page after, as well as the front label. They colored it, so that was a bonus activity. Each girl also got this handout as well. I made a rectangle in Word that fit the base. That way they could write their name and customize the little gear mechanism, practice their writing. Sat with all the girls in a circle around a table and we all made our trophies together. I'm going to quickly put it piece by piece together here so I can show you the final outcome. Last piece and the handle goes on the back of the crankshaft and this is the final outcome. I'm really happy that I printed the gears in a light color. This let the girls use the paint markers that I brought and they colored them, customized it further. I think they really enjoyed coloring it. This is a finished outcome. Another thing I ended up doing beforehand too was just quickly using my Milwaukee screwdriver to drill out the tree holes. So the holes where these caps went into, that way it took a little bit less force to press them in. Again, I didn't want the little girl guides to hurt their fingers by it being too tight of a tolerance. I did end up super gluing the tree part into the base for them because they were dropping these all over the place. A few things I would change would be I would make the tolerance on the base a little bit tighter so that this would not need to be super glued as well as the handle. I would have made this tolerance tighter. The problem was that I didn't know how strong the girls would be so I didn't want to make it too tight of a tolerance where it would be hard for them to put it together but I think I totally underestimated the sparks or girl guides because I was a bit nervous that this activity, including the instructions, would be a little bit too difficult and that they would struggle, but actually they completed the assembly in under 30 minutes and a lot of them just used the picture on the paper bag to build it. So I was pretty impressed. My favorite part was watching them pick all their favorite colors and color in their little gear mechanism. Let me know what you think of the final outcome. And again, I've included all the print files as well as this worksheet in the description below in case you wanna print this out, both in 2D and in 3D and use it for an activity of your own or just build it for fun.